there was quite a bit of feedback to my series, Packet Tracer versus GNS3 versus Viral versus Physical Equipment, which is best. So let's discuss some of the feedback and do some honorable mentions of other options with regards to labs. Jeff mentioned rack rentals from companies such as INE. He says if you need to test or lab something but don't need to purchase hardware, you can rent time on real equipment to complement your virtual setup. So that's a very good point. Rather than purchasing equipment, you may simply want to rent some equipment. It's often a lot cheaper to rent time on a remote lab or rack rental rather than buying equipment. So as an example, if you're studying for a Cisco Collaboration certification, the equipment requirements are very high. It may be a lot cheaper and more effective to simply rent some rack time rather than trying to buy all the equipment that you need for a collaboration lab. Jeff has also mentioned that he uses Viral as well as GNS3, but he finds that GNS3 is quicker. So that's great feedback. I've had quite a few comments on YouTube as well as Twitter about EVE Next Generation. There's been comments about UNET Lab, UNET Lab version 2, as well as EVE NG. So let's talk about those. So this website, routereflector.com, discusses UNET Lab and UNET Lab 2. So originally there was UNET Lab, developed from 2011. Then from 2015, because the developer of UNET Lab didn't have enough spare time to develop the product, so it was forked in 2017 to create EVENG. So be aware that EVENG is a fork of UNET Lab, but the original developer of UNET Lab has now started developing UNET Lab version 2. UNET Lab version 2 is based on Docker. This uses a different architecture to UNET Lab and EVENG. So the developer talks about some of the problems with UNET Lab. There are a number of limits with UNET Lab, which will also affect EVENG. Some of the limits are shown over here. So because of UNET Lab limits, UNET Lab version 2 is written from scratch. Be aware, however, that EVENG is a UNET Lab fork, and the EVENG team is working to overcome some of the limits described in this document. But refer to their website about how they're doing that. So EVENG, or the Emulated Virtual Environment, next generation, is a new, more powerful version of UNET Lab. Be aware that the UNET Lab original developer is not part of EVENG and is now starting to work on a separate product which leverages Docker containers. In the documentation here, we can see that it's based on Docker, Python, and other software. Now, the feedback that I received is that EVENG supports many devices that GNS3 does not. So the feedback here was, I believe you've missed out the amazing emulator simulated called EVENG. And I was told that EVENG supports more products than GNS3. Now I checked that with Julian. And he raises the point that EVENG does not support more products than GNS3. Because EVENG, Viral, UNET Lab version 1 support the same appliances as GNS3 because they're based on QMU. GNS3 supports many devices. You can see a list of devices in the documentation on the GNS3 website. Here are some examples of appliances that are supported by GNS3, and this list is constantly growing. So scrolling right down, long list of devices supported here. You can also add new devices to GNS3 by creating your own Docker containers or by creating virtual machines. So that doesn't seem to be a good reason to use EVENG. One of the advantages of EVENG is it has a web interface. You've got a single virtual machine 
and you can use a web interface to manage your devices. So that's really nice. GNS3 are also now working on adding a web interface to GNS3. So I think that'll be a nice addition to GNS3. Feedback that I've received about EVENG is that it's a lot more complicated to set up than GNS3. As always, please feel free to give me your feedback about how you feel about these different products. And as I've said before, you may want to use one product or another product or multiple products. As far as I can see on the Route Reflector website, Unit Lab version 2 is not available for release yet. It's still under development, but it'll be interesting when this product is released because we'll have a Docker-based simulation environment. Some more feedback. Jeff has mentioned that Viral is good, but you can expect half your time getting it to work and the other half actually using it. You also need a lot of resources to run Viral. So Jeff, thanks for the comments. On the physical devices video, Jeff also made some comments about the fact that you need to be careful with iOS's on your physical devices. You may need to have a valid Cisco support account to update the operating systems on your devices. I mentioned the Gartner report and Jeff makes the point that it's a little bit misleading. So again, I've had a few comments about the Gartner video that I created, talking about the CLI being dead. You can decide whether you agree with them or not about the CLI being dead. Another good point about physical equipment is don't forget about the physical space requirements in your home, the heat that the equipment generates and the electricity consumption. I've had some feedback from new network engineers complaining about the complexity to set up GNS3. Now, grumpy old network engineers like me remember the days when physical equipment was your only option. Physical equipment used to cost a lot of money. Many network engineers have spent small fortunes buying physical equipment to practice and learn. Technologies like GNS3 have revolutionized the way that we learn, and that's one of the reasons that I'm such a supporter of GNS3. It's helped me tremendously and thousands of other engineers. The fact that you can virtualize Cisco devices on your laptop is fantastic when you compare it to the cost of buying physical devices. You could spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on networking equipment to try and replicate what you can run on your laptop today. As they say, there's more computing power in your phone than the shuttles sent to space. It's amazing how technology has changed. We can run virtual networks on our laptops for free or almost for free, whereas a few years ago it would have cost you thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars to do something similar. So physical equipment can be really nice, but don't forget about all the problems, space, heat, electricity consumption, and the noise. Here's another comment about Eve. I'm told once again that it's like a GNS3 and it's easy to use and you can play with a lot of vendor appliances. Again, GNS3 can support the same appliances. So for me personally, I prefer GNS3 just because that's what I'm more familiar with. But as I like to say, is it a tomato? Is it a tomato? Is it a router? Is it a router? Is it a highway or a freeway or a motorway? Use the tool or the term that you're most comfortable with. So to summarize the feedback that I've received, other options that exist include Eve NG. That's available today. In the future, we may have Unit Lab version two, not available yet at the time of this recording. I think the great thing is that we have many options available today. In the past, your only option was to spend lots of money buying physical equipment. Today, we spoilt for choice. We could use Viral, we could use GNS3, we can use Packet Tracer, we can use physical equipment, we can use remote rack rentals, we can use EVENG, and hopefully UNET Lab version two in the future. Choose the tool that works best for you or use multiple tools. Every tool has its advantages and disadvantages. Personally, because of my experience with GNS3, the fact that GNS3 is a very mature product, because of the user base and the support community, and many other options, I personally use GNS3, but on occasion use physical equipment.
I hope I did a good job of summarizing the feedback that I've received and showing you other options available for emulating and learning about networking. I also hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.